The Chris Abraham Show. Oh, thank you. Before this episode begins, I want you to know that there's a lot of violence and swearing and aggressiveness and fighting and talking about kicking people's butts. And um, so trigger warning, uh, fair notice, and welcome to the show. Hey there, this is Chris Abraham. This is the Chris Abraham Show, season five, episode 60. How's that? 60. My name's Chris Abraham. This is the Chris Abraham Show. Um, by now, all y'all think that I'm pro-Trump, and that's not the case. I'm pro-American stability. I'm pro-precedent. I'm pro-everybody thinking about actions and reactions. I'm pro-point of view. I'm pro the fact that no matter how good you think you are, your enemy thinks they're as good as you are, um, and they think you're terrible. I am a guy who wants to warn that you can't uh, can't really unfuck something. I mean, yes, there's abortion, but I'm talking about if you make a precedent baby, P-R-E-C-E-D-E-N-T baby, that uh, results in all future presidents, the ones that the other people hate, not the one that you hate, the, not the bad guy, not the good guy, uh, but if you create a precedent of presidential witch hunting based on what you think needs to be done in order to prevent uh, baby Hitler or baby Stalin or baby uh, Marx or baby Pol Pot or uh, baby Lenin or Stalin or or uh, who's the guy um, from Hungary? No, from Romania. Uh, but like if you feel like you have achieved a level of anti-former president weaponization where you make it possible for a former president who has any, any skeletons in his or her closet. And if you can take down the president, you can take down easily senators, Congress people. You can take down governors and mayors. You can take down state representatives. You can take down the local dog catcher. If you do not respect the office and you put that aside and you put aside the stability of the U.S. government and if you put aside the trust amongst the people of the verite, of the validity of free elections, and if you make people realize that if it's for Allah, you are more than welcome to walk into a populated market and blow yourself up with the best if as long as your monstrosity and as long as your short-sighted attack even if it's a pre premeditated and preemptive attempt to foil tyranny if it is even if you think that you have the rare opportunity of killing baby hitler realize that that then empowers and enables the opposite side who believes they are as righteous, as moral, as democratic, as constitutional, as patriotic, as moral, as noble as you are when they look at themselves in the mirror. So I am happy to see Trump go to jail for 100 years. What I'm unhappy about is that this creates a precedence that results that will result. And I'm fine with seeing uh, Barry Obama and Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi and the squad and AOC. I'm happy to see George W. Bush. I'm happy to see Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. I'm happy to see all of them uh, constantly and endlessly pursued. I'm happy to see the Biden family. I'm happy to see Hunter Biden. I'm happy to see Bill Jill Biden. I'm happy to see uh, Joe's daughter Tiffany. Is that right? Or Tiffany or something. I'm happy to see AOC and I'm happy to see Nancy Pelosi and I'm happy to say, see Mitch McConnell and I'm happy to see Ron DeSantis and I'm happy to see Mayor Rudy Giuliani. I'm happy to see all of them in jail and I'm really happy to see once the 
trust in the in the democratic process, once the trust in the people, uh, once the trust in the Supreme Court or the presidency or the process or the office of the president or the office of the uh, U.S. senator or the office of U.S. representative or the office of a state senator or the office of a governor or the office of a mayor or the office of a sheriff or the office of a marshal. When all of those things are so in the garbage that nobody stands for anything, nobody tries to run for anything, the only people who can actually make it into office are Mormons, um, then what will happen? I assume that the entire house will have burnt down and we are going to become a, um, a uh, something else. But I want to say that up until now, there's been a kind of de facto, uh, I guess, agreement as to norms and values. And I feel like way more than Republicans that Democrats have done an appalling job of doing what they say, not what they do, right? And I feel like by any means necessary, we're doing this for the goodness of the world. We're doing this for, we're doing this out of righteous reasons. We're doing this for the future of the world, the future of humanity, the, for our children's children's children, for um, the unity of all men. We're doing this to defeat racism, sexism. We're doing this for LGBTQ plus IA plus plus. We're doing this for women. We're doing this for the indigenous people. We're doing this for Native Americans. We're doing this for Indians. We're doing this for Latinx. We're doing this for Pacific Islanders, for fuck's sake. As a result, out of all these noble things, we will commit war crimes only this once. We will do wet work. We will do, we will, we will, we will cut laws. We will, we will use the power of, of the media. We'll uh, forget about the, um, the firewall between government and the media. We'll forget about the firewall between um, government and religion. We'll forget about the firewalls between the checks and balances of uh, justice and the legislature and the executive. And we'll just do whatever we can to take down this giant Mothra, this giant comb over motherfucking Mothra with the giant strawberry motherfucking blonde hair at six foot mo Mothra fucking feet, six foot three motherfucking feet and 200 motherfucking 15 pounds. And for parody, I'm 300 pounds and I'm definitely heavier than Trump. I'm six foot three legit. And at, let's say, I would say he's between 240 and 280 right now. Um, you can't tell though, because he's got really baggy suits and uh, I haven't seen him in his uh, tennis whites in a while. So I don't know how fat his ass is, but I'm going to be completely entertained by this. Like my life is so small. I don't have children. I don't have a wife. I don't have an extended family. I'm basically a foundling orphan at 53 um, who died for three minutes in 2017. So, and just like uh, Chauncey Gardner, I like to watch. So I'm going to enjoy this. I'm just going to enjoy the fact that even though I've been doing these warnings about uh, once you change the rules. So for example, when I was in uh, seventh grade, I had had a terrifying uh, six, six to like 12 or 13 year old childhood where I was the only Howley kid in a neighborhood that wanted to kick my ass. And I always felt like any fight that I would get into was an unfair fight. Um, so it always seemed like the guy I was going to fight uh, had brothers and cousins and uncles and so forth. And that if I got into a fight... I don't have, I didn't have any brothers or uncles or cousins or anything. So it was just me. So every time I got into a fight, I wouldn't do it for pecking order. I wouldn't do it to show the cut of my jib. I would go in there and beat the fuck out of the person. And I would do it prematurely. I'd do it uh, preemptively. The moment I saw, the moment I was invited to fight, the moment I, I heard, Bra, you like fight. What? Want a beef? You like beef, bra. Like beef. Beef is like, do you want to fight? And I started seeing a kid 
taking off his shirt, which means he's actually committing to weaponization of body. Um, I would knock him over, kick the shit out of him, beat him to a fucking pulp, and then it would never happen again. But what I did is maybe the neighborhood had sort of a an expectation of behavior. Maybe fighting was just a way that kids kind of figured out like the the pH balance, the relationship of the neighborhood. It was maybe it was sort of a de facto uh, handshake. Maybe it was the way uh, tough guys got to know each other. That's why you know sports were invented so that you could figure out the metal m e t t l e of the person whose ass you wanted to kick on the field instead of um, behind a. Uh, behind the the art annex, and I didn't know the rules. I was I felt scared to shit. I had existential dread, and every time I was being faced with what was probably just a quick little fist fight, uh, I resulted in tyrannical destruction. Um, and luckily, there were never any follow up fights. There very well could have been. I could have been jumped. I could have been conspired against. Uh, I could have been. Uh, followed home and beat up. I could have gotten the gotten the the that it could have escalated and all those other things. It never escalated because I think that everybody thought it was so fucking crazy and violent that uh, maybe people were scared of me. I don't know. Um, my point is is that um, the Republicans have been extremely spineless, extremely cowardly. Um, most of the GOP is filled with neocons who are establishment internationalists who love wars and love um, their standard, love what they have because they spent their entire life risking to get it. They didn't go into banking. They went into politics. Um, And so why would they risk the status quo? So as a result, right, eventually, even if the Republicans do not gang up, there's going to be at a certain point when uh, Chris Abraham keeps on knocking people over and beating them to shit before the fight starts because he's afraid of his own neck and doesn't realize the harm he's done and that it really shouldn't be that bad. At some point, people are going to figure me out and realize that I do not play fair. I do not fight fair. I carry a baseball bat in the back of my VW rabbit. You know, I have all that fun stuff. So... As a result, at some point, people are going to start making a plan. And that plan is what I'm warning all y'all about. A plan I'm really warning you about is that uh, when you define the rules of the fight, you are going to be held accountable for fighting with those rules. If you openly uh, game elections, if you openly take advantage of loopholes, if you never let a... Uh, never, never let a crisis go to waste. And if you've, you know, taken advantage of or weaponized COVID or lockdowns or stay at homes, if you have, um, uh, indicted and prosecuted willy nilly, even if the cases were garbage in order to either defile someone's reputation or besmirch them, besmudge them, get them tangled up in expensive court cases and possibly get them pulled into a, um, a misdemeanor or a felony, or even into jail if you're lucky. If you put someone in a position where you're willing to create persecu- uh, uh, political prisoners, where you're be able to weaponize political persecution, whether you're able to um, play hearts and minds in a way that undermines but doesn't quite break the de- uh, the the democratic process especially if you start becoming shameless about it, right? If you start not caring whether or not anybody, uh, you know, checks the receipts or uh, figures out what really happened or, or, you know, follows the blockchain, if you will, uh, does the accounting and figures out that everything has been a sham or everything can be easily made to be perceived as a sham that people start to believe that COVID was a sham and was really just the flu, Uh, that um, Ukraine was a sham. It was an opportunity for the military-industrial complex to make a lot of money, 
and those poor Ukrainians, well, they were Nazis and they were corrupt anyway. Uh, maybe we could have, you know, quite possibly depleted uh, Putin's power. Maybe as a secondary effect, we could have fomented a, um, a regime change. I mean, that's just secondary. What if we realize what's really going on in Syria? What if we start to second guess what happened in January 6th? What if we what if we at least believe that that was a, a honey trap, if that was a fed um, rat trap just to catch rats, rats, and that it was mostly feds and that feds uh, did the equivalent of um, of the uh, what is it called? The, the piper, the piper, um, the rat piper, the, the snake charmer. I don't know. Well, the uh, maybe it's St. Patrick and the snakes, maybe. The feds were able to seduce uh, the snakes into into the Capitol building. It doesn't need to be true either. If 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 your lies about Trump are as convincing as the other people's lies about Hillary or Stacey Abrams or January 6th or Nancy Pelosi or even like Barack Obama and Big Mike, you know, um, that it rekindled this whole thing of, uh, uh, Barack Obama being our first, what is it? Uh, our first black gay, um, um, Nigerian, no, no, um, uh, Kenyan, Kenyan president and all these other things, right? Like if, if we can be lied to for in the, in the, in the name of good, such as keeping Trump from being elected, then we can be lied to for anything. Be lied to about about climate change. We could be lied to about election viability and trust in the democratic process. We could be lied to about what teachers are and aren't teaching in schools. We can lie about uh, what um, what over the counter medicines are uh, can and can't treat COVID. Uh, what is or isn't uh, horse paste. Uh, or dewormer, like there's just so many things now, and people aren't even trying to be careful. Where people are second guessing the moon landing, people are second guessing um, all kinds of things. And while most people are playing with it for the lols, there's still a lot of people who do not know what to believe, except they do not believe mainstream media, they do not believe what they see on TV, they do not believe reporting, they do not believe. Um, their generals, they do not believe their president. They don't believe their senators or Congress people. Um, they don't believe that the political pundits, they don't believe what's on NBC, ABC, and CBS. They don't believe what's on Fox, MSNBC, or CNN. And what do they have to believe? What, what do they believe? That's my question. And every action is an equal and opposite reaction. And my dad reminded me about that all the time. He also taught me how to fight once we got to Hawaii. He told me to hit with my elbows and to use my full body weight. So thanks, Dad. He also told me how to fall when fighting, which is to tuck the shoulder and to roll. So my Marine dad was good for something. He, was, he taught me photography. He taught me drawing. He taught me scuba diving. And he taught me how to beat the shit out of someone. On that note, I love you. I want you. I need you with all my heart. This was the Chris Abraham Show. And uh, it's season five, episode 60. And I'm going to go give a trigger warning to the beginning of this episode. All right. Talk to you soon. Love you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.